story of mystery and the imagination, what's behind Australia's spate of bizarre animal attacks? Is it a real-life X-Files? Yes, plenty of crackpot theories about that one. But Glenn Conley, next up, some loony claims that aliens are responsible for a spate of mysterious cattle deaths. It was instant death by what we could see, instant death. But what killed these cows? I just can't answer that one. What they think they're dealing with are creatures not from this planet. Cattle disappear in the middle of the night. Farmers find them dead next day with bits and pieces surgically removed with no signs of any blood or tracks around the carcasses. It's a weird mystery that's been haunting parts of Australia's beef and dairy industry for decades. Nobody's been able to solve it, but now, you guessed it, a visiting American researcher claims aliens are behind it all. Greg Quayle reports. In the north of New South Wales is cattle country. Here, life resonates to the seasons, and a farmer's biggest worry is fluctuating prices. But there are some who tell of a terror which has haunted the land for decades. Greg, this is the area where we found uh, most of the cows dead. It was in an area around the side of the hill. How many cows here, all up? The ten or a dozen in, in total just here. Barry Patch, he manages dairy farms near the town of Casino, and he remembers, like it was yesterday, a two-year period in the late 70s when he'd find his cows randomly and mysteriously slaughtered and mutilated. The, the udders would be removed, uh, usually the tongue taken out, and uh, various uh, mutations from, from that, but the carcass itself was quite complete and no blood, no, if the other was taken out, there was no blood whatsoever. More than 30 cattle were killed. Most of them were about to carve. And the mutilations had an eerie pattern. Udders, tongues, ears. Sometimes the muzzle and the jowls were missing. And there was never any blood. It's just not possible in my mind. And how that was done, I do not know. I have no idea how that was done. All of Barry Patch's dead cows were examined by a veterinary surgeon. He didn't want to talk on camera, but he told us, in writing, that causes of death were never determined. There were no bullet wounds, no stab marks or needle punctures, no poisons, no snake bites, nothing. And the surgeon also told us that tissue which had been removed from bone had been done so far more cleanly than could have been done with a knife. A lot of the animals still had mouthfuls of grass where they'd uh, come to an absolute sudden stop. There were never any tracks and never any sign of a struggle. It was instant death by what we could see, instant death. The spate of mutilations near Casino were kept fairly quiet. Police never unraveled the mystery and then it stopped. We've now discovered that the whole grisly scenario had been played out years earlier, more than a hundred kilometres to the north. The, I'd say the late 50s, early 60s, and then it went on, I wouldn't know, but very, a lot of cow mutilations, mainly cow mutilations. Stuart Graham lives north of Lismore. He remembers when the local farmers were on the point of setting up vigilante groups to protect their cattle. But what killed these cows? How did they do it? Well... I just can't answer that one. There was no bullet wound? No bullet wound whatsoever. As I sit here and think, I did not see a lot of blood. And then there's Heather Smith. Her farm lost three cows in the late 60s. She had her ears, the tips of her ears cut off, and her tongue cut out, and the, her tail, the brush on her tail cut off, and the other cut out. And just as if she had just died there. And no struggle. No sign of a struggle? No. No blood. The collective memory in these valleys puts the figure at something like two dozen cows killed and always the same parts removed. John Osborne lost about ten beasts. No blood? No. Did that strike you as odd? Yeah, a bit. The mutilations have also been reported in more recent times. Over the border near Ipswich, just two years ago, Christopher Hughes found two prized bullocks 
dead. Is this here we found, found the first one, Greg? What had been done to it? Uh, it had its uh, muzzle cut out, uh, one ear taken right off, uh, the tongue cut out, and the hind quarters uh, gutted out on the inside. Who or what is killing the cattle, and over the last 40 years, and why? Well, farmers and vets rule out wild animals, and here's where, depending on how you look at it, the story gets even more bizarre. That's because cattle mutilations have occurred across the globe over decades in places like Canada, Puerto Rico, Central and South America, the Canary Islands, Europe, and all over the United States. And what's happened overseas appear to be carbon copies of the mutilations here in Australia. Reports of the strange killings were first collated nearly 20 years ago by an American journalist, Linda Moulton Howe. She's made two films and written two books which record hundreds of cases of senseless attacks on stock. There have been animals found on wet sandbars in the middle of a river, lying on their side with exactly the same excisions and no blood in not a single track. Photographs tell a chilling story, the bloodless removal of udders, jowls and muzzles, ears and eyes cut out with a circle of skin around the socket. Now remember Christopher Hughes, when his two bullocks were killed, the local paper photographed the carcasses. I'd just like to show you some photographs which came from the States. Would you say that the injuries to that cow is similar to what happened to yours? Yeah, yeah, identical. Identical sort of damage? Yep. What about this one here? Yep, same in the mouth. Yep, exactly the same in the mouth. Teeth were just cut straight off here, yeah, that's right, something like that one. Yeah. Back at Casino, Barry Patch's neighbour, John Want, also saw many of the dead and mutilated cows. All, all the ones that I've seen out there were smaller in size, like that, it would be the biggest thing. More like that one? Yeah. 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 What about this? Did you ever see anything like that one? Yeah, that's common. Mm. Very common. That sort of wound around the jaw? Yeah, yeah. We also showed the American photos and those of Christopher Hughes's cattle to the vet who examined Barry Patcher's cows. He said that the mutilations he'd seen were very similar. The veterinarians stand back from these cases and say, surgically, they don't know how the organs were removed. No blood were around the wounds. No blood were around any of the, either of the animals. No tracks. In Linda Moulton Howe's documentaries, investigating police themselves ask the incredible question. Who is doing this now is very possibly creatures not of this planet. Now that, you know, that shakes you up a little bit. Creatures not of this planet. You know, you're thinking of Muck Rogers and things like this. But that's the way it is seriously right now people who work in the United States in intelligence and in military situations, people have told me straight to my face what they think they're dealing with are creatures not from this planet. Almost nightly when this was going on, uh, we could pick out a very brilliant, huge, brilliant light in the sky. One of the most dramatic eyewitnesses to what appeared to be an animal actually being seen rising in a beam of light was an entire family of five people outside of Houston, Texas in 1973. American biophysicists have tested grass under and around the dead animals and can't explain why the plant's cells have changed. The metabolism at the mitochondria level in the cells is changed the same way from case to case. And pathologists have examined the animal tissue. They've definitely been cut with something that is categorized by pathologists as high heat. We can't say what the instrument is. There are people who link cattle mutilations to strange lights in the sky, that sort of stuff. You ever heard of that one? I'm going to tell you something. As I said here, and I was called a rat bag. Now, I, I had five years in the army. I'm not a rat bag, I suppose. Stuart I... Graham told us how 20 that, years ago he had an encounter with something in the sky. A big circular sort of thing. It just sat floating, no noise, like a big kind of a soft, 
bluey, greeny, soft light, and around the centre it appeared to me as though there was a row of smaller lights, like a lighter colour. A circle of smaller lights yeah, on around the, the whole thing. Yeah, around the whole, like, like little porthole things, like little...